Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will cover state in composable. This is a completely new concept for you and also it's very easy. So let's see what is state. State in Jetpack Compose refers to mutable variable. Now what is mutable? Something that has capability to change. Means it's not fixed. On the other side, immutable means that is fixed. So, mutable variable means a variable that can change later. Now, the definition does not stop here. It also says when its value changes, allowing the UI to automatically reflect the updated state without manual intervention. What does this mean? It means if any changes happens in the value or variable, those changes will be automatically reflected in the UI component. If you have watched my previous videos, there I have used manual way of updating the UI in XML. But here Jetpack Compose says not anymore. State will do that for you. Trust me, whatever I am saying right now will make sense to you once we will create our example project. But for now, let's see how state is different from variable. I'll give you four points. First, recomposition trigger. Recomposition means to form something again. In this case, it says in state, when the value change, automatically updating the UI to reflect the new state. While regular variable do not trigger recomposition. While regular variable do not trigger recomposition and require manual UI updates. Got it? Second, observability. It says state are observable, enabling the framework to efficiently track changes while variable lack observability. Third, immutable versus mutable. It says state are always mutable, which allows modification, while variables are typically immutable, means fixed. Fourth, scope to composables. It says states are often scope to composable, ensuring that the state is localized and specific to the UI component, while variables may have a broader scope. Simple. Now let's move on to the important part that is syntax. See, this is how we normally declare variable, right? Where edge is equal to zero. But this is how we declare state variable. Where age by, remember, inside it mutable state of zero. Now I know you might have a lot of questions. What is by, what is remember and what is mutable state of? We will cover it. But before that, I also want to clear this. In Kotlin, we have two types of variables, where and well. This is where, means mutable, whose value can change. And well means immutable, whose value never changes. If you already have where, which is mutable, then why is there a need of state? Because state not only changes the value, but it also reflects its updated state on the UI component. While a normal variable can't do that. Got it? You will see when I will create the project. Now first, let's see what is by. By is not a concept of Jetpack Compose. Instead, it's a concept of Kotlin. By is a keyword that is used with delegate pattern to create delegated properties. Now what is delegated properties? It allows you to implement the logic for a property in a separate class. Delegation will help you to write more concise and reusable code. It's a good alternative to inheritance. Got it? Next part of syntax is remember. Remember is a function used to retain the state across recomposition. Means it will preserve the stateful data without resetting during UI updates. Now what is stateful data? There are two types of pattern, stateful and stateless. Stateful means it has memory of previous request, while stateless means something that has no memory of previous request. Got it? So in our case, it is stateful data, which means remember keyword remembers everything from the previous request. And accordingly to that, it updates the UI. Next is mutable state of. It's a part of mutable class. As the definition says, it is a function that creates a mutable state variable, which means a variable that can be further modified. And it also says that it returns a pair containing the current value and a setter function. That ultimately means allowing modification of the state and triggering UI recomposition when the value changes. Got it? Theory clear? 
Now it's time for some practical example. So go to your Android Studio. Here I have removed the default code. Then I will create a composable function as learn state. And make sure to call it here inside the set content. And done. Now inside composable function, we will see two situations. One with the normal variable and second one with the state variable. Okay. Also, we will implement a very simple example where we will simply increment the age. That's it. So to do that, I will create a normal variable as where age is equal to 0. Simple. Also, I am using where which means mutable. This is how we normally write, correct? Then I will create a button. So when you will click on it, it will increment by 1. Simple. So to do that, as I said in my previous video, we can't directly write button because it will take the entire screen. So instead, first we will create a layout and inside that layout, our UI component. So for the layout, I'll use column layout. Then inside it, our button. So when you will click on it, it should increment by 1. So to do that, I will write each plus plus here in on click. And then on the button, the text will say, I am age variable years old. Now let's run the app and see what happens. Okay, so here is a button. I'll click on it and nothing happens. Don't worry, there is no error from our side. The project is working perfectly fine. Even the age is incrementing, but at the back end. Only that it's not reflecting on the UI, means on the button. Let me show you at the back end, means in Lockcat. So to make it visible at Lockcat, here I will add a lock. And done. Just to show you what is happening at the back end. See, when I will click on this button, it's not updating on the button. But look, over here in the back end, you can see it is incrementing here. And that's what I was trying to explain you through theory. Here, the age will update because we are using where, which is mutable. But it will not reflect on the button. And that's when state comes into the picture. Now I'll remove this log and come in this normal variable. Instead, we will use state variable. So remember the syntax where variable name that is age by remember and inside it mutable state of that is the initial value which is zero. Now let's run the app and see. Here I will click on the button and look the age is getting incremented and also it's visible on the button itself. Amazing right? We will be using seed in our upcoming projects for sure. For now that is it for the video. If you are new to this channel then please consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next video.